Okay, turn it on. Turn it, turn it back on, let me see. Again. Oh dude, we got a fire going in here. This is the amplifier out of the Packard Bell uh, combination stereo television that I completely restored. It's from about 68. Uh, has a color TV, phonograph, AM FM tuner. And this is the amp for the tuner phonograph. And uh, the failure point was two transistors shorted and caused one of the resistors to expire protection and these are germanium transistors and as these things age they're becoming very unstable so what I want to do I'll take a look at the schematic put the camera will focus The way we can tell their germanium transistors is by the uh, by the drop across across them, and a silicon will have between emitter and base about 0.58 to 0.62 volts, and you can see this is 0.22 minus 12, so they, they 0.12, so this is you know a 0.1 volt drop or so and what's nice about the design of this is it uses a transformer here so if these blow up it doesn't burn everything it doesn't cause everything behind it to short um, I emailed a, a friend and uh, someone who's probably one of the top audio vintage audio repair guys at least in the West and I asked him what he suggested for this stuff because it's what he does for a living and he suggested uh, MJ15003 transistors and then what we have to do is we have to readjust the bias to get between 0.5 and point, 0.58 and 0.6 volts here um, so I went to the elect local electronic store and they didn't have the MJ transistors. I can get those off eBay, but this guy is kind of in a hurry to get this working. So I ended up with NTE 60s, which is the cross reference. This is a pretty robust transistor. So I ended up with two of those, and I know they're not gain matched, but this is not a. This is a, you know, this is not a high power high-performance amplifier and the resistors I'm going to change I have to change these because they blew up the, the 0.68 the ones I'm going to change are this 2.7 ohm and I'm not quite sure where I want to go with that I just have to kind of start with 2.7 then 3.3 then 5.1 or 4.7 or whatever the steps are so I got sets of all the resistors they had and I also picked up the electrolytic capacitors which I'll just change while I'm in here take a look there at the resistor that blew up yeah let's get to work let's get to work on this I'm even noticing this one took a bit of a hit look at how it's all swollen in the middle and cracked oh, this doesn't have any fuses all this has is a circuit breaker and that's you know, generally fuses and circuit breakers are not designed to protect the circuit they're designed to uh, stop the thing from burning your house down which this could have done it almost did I changed the 
six eighths and I used point five ones because it was suggested that I go down in value and before I put the transistors in I'm just checking um, this channel and I want to see what the drop the bias was and it's uh, 0.96 and as I do this I'm testing every new part with the meter and verifying it they didn't use it but I'm gonna use just a little drop of this zinc grease and um, this is the old transistor you can see that little hole right there that's where you want to put the zinc grease on the mic away for the insulator. You want to put just a drop of it on each side right where that hole is. Here I am saying just a drop and I end up with half the tube on there. So I plugged it in and it immediately blew the circuit breaker. So I pulled the transistors out and checked them and they were not shorted. And um, I put it back together and I got the variac out and I'm measuring the drop across the uh, emitter resistor and as soon as I start to bring the the variac up that's a half ohm resistor I noticed it's just acting like it's dead shorted so I started to verify some stuff here and this is how a really simple mistake and not double checking everything can really get you screwed. Um, NPN and I need PNP so I need the complement the NTE61 I don't know why the I don't know why the guy at the electronics store gave me the wrong thing it must have just been an accident so um, I gotta get some PNP transistors. The little arrow pointing in means PNP. If it was pointing out, it would be NPN. So, um, this is kind of irritating. Okay, I was finally able to find a. Um, couple good PNP transistors in a TO3 package on this. This is a old QSC amp, about 600 watts per channel. It had, let's see, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, like 24 transistors. And these are a much higher quality. You can see see here it says uh, the 2SB554 five, five, and then the 0 and 1H are the specific gain so they're matched and I actually had pulled one out of there which was this one and it uh, tests good but it was short when I got to about 80 volts on the Variac so checking them with a voltmeter is not always the best thing you really get a Put good voltage on so let's get the iPod and see what this sounds like without changing the bias and going from germanium to silicon okay so I just want you guys to hear what this sounds like when the bias is incorrect so we're gonna roll some Kesha and we've got the Variac up at about 100 volts and I'm gonna bring the volume up slowly going into the amp, which I'm only feeding one channel at a time. I got identical speakers there. And now the next step is I need to start, these are 2.7 ohms, I need to start adjusting these up uh, until I get uh, about 0.55 to 0.60 volts across uh, from B 
base to emitter on both transistors and I have to change them both at the same time. Okay, I've gone straight to 15 ohms which was the biggest value that I had purchased and I'm at 0.538 volts and I do not have the variac connected. I'm just straight to the line. So I could probably go up, let's see, 15, maybe to 16, somewhere between 16 and 18 ohms would be the correct bias. And here's, I don't know if the camera will pick this up, but this right here is the germanium channel. Um, we'll see if we can hear the hiss and noise. So you can hear there's some hum there and some hiss. This is the silicon channel that's been re-biased. You can hear there's some hum there but very little hiss. Uh, let's uh, put some audio through it and see how it sounds. So that's the germanium channel. That's a silicon channel. And you want to do this, when you're checking this, you want to do it with minimum volume because the, the volume, the AC from the thing will actually bias it and that's not what biasing is about. Biasing is about making sure that it's minimally turned on to a point where they're conducting enough not to distort at a low volume. Okay, enough of that crap. Um, all right, there we go. So, I need to, I could leave the 15s, I guess. It's not that critical. It's not like some high-end Class A audiophile thing. It's a, it's actually very well built. Uh, I need to get some NTE-61s, and I need to install the filter caps, which they don't appear to be bad at all because there's little to no hum, but I might as well just change them while I'm in here. And uh, get the right transistors, maybe go up a little bit on the resistors, get everything installed and buttoned up nice and tight, and it's good to go. And then what I'll do is I'll run it for a week before I return it and reinstall it. I put the 15 in series with the 2.7 that was in there and that got my bias up to 0.576 and now I have about equal hiss on both channels. I don't know if the camera's... So that's a silicon. That's a germanium. So I like the way that sounds a little bit better but that's on the high side of being biased on so I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to let this sit for a few hours and feel the temperature of the heat sink and see if it's one side's getting notably hotter than the other. Okay the amp has been running here for about oh I'd say about five hours or so and this is the new silicon side and then the green corroded one on the left there that's the germanium and we can feel these and this one this area is slightly warmer than this area we don't have to take my hands word on it that's 102 degrees and that says 102 degrees so it might be it's barely any different so I think I'm gonna just kind of leave it the way it is. It doesn't matter if they're a tad over biased on. This is the kind of these are the kind of things we're going to have to do to keep this old equipment running in the future. So once I get the NTE 61s in there, I will um, double check the voltage drops and bias again and the temperature and if I need to adjust it, I'll adjust it, but I'm happy with it.